Hi beautiful souls, it's Sadhana and welcome to my channel. Welcome back for those of you that have been here before. Today I wanted to have a little chit chat about fairy decks, about decks from other worlds and other realms and just share with you some of my thoughts. Whether you are a deck collector, a tarot reader, a lover of art, I hope that you find something in this video that resonates with you. We all come from different parts of the world, and I'm starting to understand that <clears throat> wherever we are, there is um, there are a multitude of types of elemental beings, and to classify them all as fairy, I don't believe is correct. Um, how they have been depicted in artwork, how we see them or feel them or experience them, experience them personally. Is, is a personal experience and that through the artwork in a deck, through the energy of a walk through a forest or however you connect with the elemental realm, I believe that through this, through the modality of tarot, we can gain a, a deeper perspective and perhaps a deeper respect for the elementals that are among and around us and with us. Some of them I have found to be quite um, cheeky and fun and playful, while others are um, kind of nudging me in ways that uh, I didn't expect. So it feels to me like I am on the, uh, the edge of discovering something that um, wasn't available to me before. And so I'm going to take a deeper look at all of these decks because they have been calling out to me. So just let me pause here and just tell you what we're looking at and why I've decided to include them today because there are other decks that I could have um, included in this video. In case you're not familiar with these tarot decks, I will just go over what they are. So the oldest chronologically is this one here. This is the Tarot of the She. This was created... Uh, the artwork as well as the little white book by Emily Carding and it was first published in 2006 and then it was republished I believe in 2010 by Schiffer and this is the Schiffer version it was either it was on one of the uh, tarot card groups on Facebook somebody had suggested that there may be a new version of this deck coming out so to keep Keep um, your eye out for that. It would be amazing if it did come out as a as a borderless version, and that way we could get into the um, the details of the artwork more. However, I'm saying that um, yesterday I did a video on the borderless and the bordered version of this deck here, the Mystic Fairy Tarot, and it may be something that. Um, might not work with this deck. So if you want to look at my video I did yesterday, um, and I may talk about that more in this video, but there seems to be a need to have a container around the strong fae energy. It is, um, it is wild. And for some people, it is very challenging to work with. And there's something about having the border to contain the energy and these black borders here, when you lay out lots of cards, right, you've got this kind of space between and um, whether decks have white space or black space sometimes we need that space to give us a moment um, to interpret to intuit even just to breathe so that is the oldest one and then uh, 2007 mystic fairy tarot so this one here I just pointed to this one is by uh, the artist by Linda Ravenscroft and the guidebook is by Barbara Moore and three of these decks actually these three right here all of the guidebooks were written by Barbara Moore so if you're familiar with her work the you know it's just so well written and thorough and thoughtful and extremely helpful whether you are a beginner reader or you um, read professionally. Her guidebooks are definitely um, books that you can read multiple times and get something new out of each time that you read it. And then 2010 Shadowscapes Tarot and Hezekos Tarot, both um, 
came out on the market. Hezekos is a self-published deck by Mary Griffin. So the little green book, as well as the artwork is by Mary Griffin herself. And there will never be another printing of this deck. So if there are any decks still available through her website, hezekostarot.com, and you're interested in it, I would um, get that as soon as possible. The Shadowscapes Tarot, of course, many of you are familiar with. Um, this is by Stephanie Puyloon Law. And it is just, uh, I don't know what to say, just a beautiful, beautiful deck that takes you deep into a realm that is, it's magical, it's mystical, um, and it's, a, it's a, just a very, very special place. I wish, I hope that one day there is a, an anniversary deck or a special printing of this deck so we can have the cards a little bit larger and just hold the artwork in, you know, in a little more actual physical space, but a super special deck. And then we go to Crystal Visions Tarot, which was the following year. So this is Crystal Visions over here. I have trimmed mine, so if it looks a little different than your deck, so the borders are not on that deck. This is the, of all of these decks here, that's the only one that I've trimmed. Um, also not a fairy deck, but a lot of elemental energy in many, many of the cards, dragon energy, and it's, I wanted to include it here because it is very uh, mystical in that way. It's definitely of a different plane, a different space, and so I, um, so I chose to include it in this grouping. And then Tarot of the Hidden Realm, <clears throat> which is a favorite of many people, came out in 2013. Um, the artwork by Julia Jeffries is just amazing. This is a truly special deck. There's something special about the relationship between these two decks and the energy between these two decks. In Stephanie Pui Moon Law's artwork, we are viewing these scenes from a distance. So we take in many, many details of the scene. And in every card, there are so many things to look at. And to me, it almost feels like we are in a very similar world, but here we, instead of stepping back and looking at the big picture, we've been given a special opportunity to see this world up close. And we're able to get very, very close to the Fae, very close to the energy of this plane and experience and be with a group of elementals who have something very important to share with us. The most recent publication is the one here. This is a Hay House publication. The artwork is by Howard David Johnson. And it is the reason that I purchased this deck. It was my intention to trim this deck. And the reason I haven't done it yet is because um, of the backs. And I wasn't sure because in trimming it and keeping, um, I mean, the backs are just so beautiful. I would hate to, to hate to destroy the backs, but actually just looking at it now, it would be possible to trim it and make it into a square deck and then either use it as an Oracle deck, or if you um, wanted to write on it, you could definitely um, write on it with a, you know, a gold pen or something. This deck is edged also in silver gilding and this deck shuffles beautifully. Um, one of the things I found in trimming decks is that it doesn't shuffle quite the same after, after you trim it. So I may one day do that. Enjoy the time lapse through the major arcana and then I'll be back with you when we get to the first suit of minors. Thank you. 
And so reflecting on that quick flip through, was there was there a world that you would like to enter into? Was there a realm that was calling to you? And I think really that is my intention for making this video is to experience that myself, especially going through the time lapse. It will create a different sensation than flipping through the cards slowly. And then moving to the suit of passion and action and fertility and creativity and risk. We have the element of fire represented by the Ace of Spring in the Fairy Tarot, the suit of warriors, the element of fire in the Tarot of the She. These four decks are called the Wands and then we have Rods in the Hezekos Tarot. One of the reasons I wanted to include the Crystal Visions Tarot this one here was because of its dragon energy and just to get another really good look at that. Moving to the suit of emotions, the unconscious, the intuition, love. We have the suit of cups in most of the decks. We have the suit of summer here and the suit of the dancer. Then moving to the element of air, the suit of swords, the suit of the mind and communication, truth. You'll notice that in all of these decks, the swords are facing down, which is kind of unusual. I know a lot of people prefer the ace of swords to be facing up towards the air. And here in each of these decks where there is a sword, the sword is facing uh, toward the earth. We have the suit of dreamers in the tarot of the she and the suit of winter in the fairy tarot.
And finally, we have the suit of pentacles, the home of the elementals, the earth, the energy, the pulse of Mother Earth, home, family, hearth, and all of the 3D realities that go with that. So enjoy this glance through the final suit. Hi, I thought I would come on and just say hi face to face and I hope you enjoyed that little uh, walk through those fade decks. That was kind of fun to put together. Um, I thought I would just wind up here and tell you a few more things about each of the decks, my favorite cards and so forth. And if you have any questions about my experience with Fey Energy or um, have anything that you would like to share, I look forward to reading that um, in the comments below later. So first of all, I thought I would uh, just talk a little bit about Crystal Visions because, um, and as I said, I have trimmed this deck. And one of the things I do, um, I really like decks that have dragons in them, but not just straight up dragons. I like it when the energy is mixed. And so this deck has um, quite a few cards, especially in the suit of ones with dragons on them. And that's one of the reasons I, I really like this deck. And this Ace of Wands to me is just um, absolutely brilliant. There's a unique strength to this deck. So I would say that one of the downfalls of this deck is it does have all very um, beautiful uh, skinny bodies, you know, that kind of thing, Victoria's Secret type models. And, um, but there is within that, a tremendous amount of strength and power and I find that even in um, the beautiful the extremely beautiful uh, people that are in this deck the power is is incredible this is a very special eight of wands card and um, that's one of the reasons I I like this deck and this three of wands having the crystal ball in her hand and that the power of the light. I just, I just find this really special. So yeah, Crystal Visions Tarot, Jennifer Galasso, and I believe she wrote the guidebook as well too. If you are doing the seven day seven decks challenge, I decided to use the Tarot of the She for the day one, which is a deck that I haven't been using. It's been put away, and so I'm really glad that I pulled it out for this comparison and this side by side. Um, Emily Carding's deck is really special and I think one of the reasons I put it away was I had a very challenging time relating to it. Um, the artwork wasn't really my style, didn't like the black borders, and some of the, I just found the Fey energy, the she energy kind of challenging. But I think it is time and it, it, it is time for me and I'm going to keep this deck out now on my altar. And some of these cards, this one in particular, I found extremely, extremely, um, almost overwhelmingly profound. The poetry, so in the minors, if you don't have this deck, the, there is a, a short poem for each of the minors. And it's really, they're really beautifully written. This lover's card, 
There are there is so much to see in this lover's card. She says in her guidebook that this was the second card that she created. And maybe that's the reason why she just packed in all of the metaphors and all of the images from the dove and the, the raven in the middle. And then we've got the water and fire in the bottom. We have the fae with in each of the trees on the side. And it's just the trees intertwined. It's just really beautiful. And then this ace of water for me is just mesmerizing. So I can see myself really getting lost in this deck and I'm really glad that I pulled it out. And I'm just look at the power, the strength in this Warrior 7. One of the other strengths of this deck is the keywords on the miners are excellent and they're not by any means um, standard keywords. So you'll get an opportunity in exploring this deck to see many of the um, traditional meanings kind of expanded and I think Emily did an amazing amazing job with that. I'm not going to talk about the Mystic Fairy Tarot because I've already made a few videos of that and if you want to explore Mystic Fairy a little further you can look at some of my other videos. Um, okay and then the Fairy Tarot. So this is the one that has a guidebook by Doreen Virtue and um, Radley Valentine and the reason that I purchased this deck was not so much for myself, but also, but to give it a really good look over. I work at a metaphysical shop in Seashell, British Columbia. And there's a lot of people that still want to buy a lot of these um, Dorian Virtue and Hay House publications. So I think it's really important, um, especially the days that I'm in the shop, that I really can um, speak to these decks and get to know them really well. And so I have to bring them home, unfortunately, um, pay for them and, and play with them. When, um, so I mentioned earlier in this video that I was thinking about, okay, so why not trim this deck, make it a square deck, and then if necessary, write some of the, um, uh, numbers, um, on, or the elements on the cards. And I could do that. However, not all of the cards are square. About 50% of them, so I made it into two piles, 50% of them are a different shape. They're a rectangular image. So I don't think that's going to be possible to trim it and make it small like that. So I'm probably not going to do that. The other problem that people have with this deck is that it's one of those decks where everything seems to be um, watered down. There's no, the swords are not, there's no puncturing. Um, if you saw the uh, live chat with Kelly Fitzgerald and there was a, um, somebody on the live chat that asked for recommendations for decks that had no blood or puncturing and I just, I thought that was so sweet. Anyway, this is um, this Nine of Winter. So this Nine of Swords, I think, is really well done. The picture is beautiful. It still has a child who's awake in the middle of the night looking out to the moon. If you are a beginner, or if you're a person who doesn't want blood and puncturing in your deck, um, you have options for your softer decks. And I would probably recommend the Good Tarot or maybe um, Spirit Song Tarot or something like that. But as I have been um, playing with this deck, I'm just going to grab my glasses. The long bits of writing at the bottom, and some of them are more than others, um, are not entirely um, positive. So this one, for example, says unfounded fear, focusing on worst case scenarios, allowing worry to grow out of proportion to the problem. So I think the descriptions on the bottom do deal with some of the more challenging issues and that came up on several of the cards. Um, yeah, I think this um, Eight of Summer is really lovely. So this is the Eight of Cups, right? The card of leaving, card of walking away. And again, the message is pretty straightforward. It's not, it's not watered down. So after spending a little more time with this deck, and giving it more thought, I feel that this deck has potential to, to be a little more balanced than I previously, previously thought it was. Yeah. And you may really appreciate this artwork. So, 
So that's the fairy tarot. Hezekos tarot. So I've had this deck for quite a while and I, when I first got it, I used it a lot, but I have put it away. And one of the reasons I put it away was because of the court cards. I was having a really hard time. And since then I have spent a lot of time getting to know the court cards and um, I probably could work with this more easily now because I don't, um, because I have a, a much larger repertoire um, when it comes to working with the court cards. So the thing I like about this deck is the minors. I think it the minors are its strength. The lovely um, gnome-like fey creatures of Hezekos are really quite special, really quite something. And um, if you like that energy, it's it's very, very powerful. Right? So if you're not comfortable with quartz and close-up quartz, this deck will be will be a little hard to work with so you might want to spend time with a deck um, that has easier court cards to read court cards with more expression a little more background and then come back to this deck but if you um, if you like the gnome and, and the fey creatures it's just the miners are really 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 special so that's the hezekos and here's another deck that is not considered a fey deck uh, or an elemental deck. Usually it's described as a fantasy deck, a uh, deck from other worlds. But to me, it really, in I, to include it in this video was so worth it. And it also gave me a chance to um, do a little more, to look a little more closely into some of the cards. I love cards with spider webs and just the, the metaphor of the spider web. And this is one of my favorite cards in the deck. So that's why I'm showing it to you. I'm showing you a few of my favorites. And the Six of Swords has an incredibly powerful message, which I really, really appreciate. The artwork is just so stunning. This Hierophant is so clever. And it is one of those decks. If you do put it away and then you bring it out again, every time you look at this deck, something, some little detail is going to stand out and just, um, just speak to you. Absolutely beautiful Queen of Cups. I just find these cards so inspiring and at, on so many levels. So very happy that I pulled this deck out again. And then I just thought I would make mention of Tarot of the Hidden Realm. And does anybody not have Tarot of the Hidden Realm? It is a deck that I, every time I pull it out, I feel a closer um, relationship with it. I find its magic, its power to be um, extremely special. And I don't find it challenging to read with at all. The strength, if I had to pick a suit, I would pick wands. I think the strength of this deck is in the wands. So the strength of the fire, the three of fire, is the power of creation. And I think it really, what this deck does is it brings the element into focus. And so we see the strength and the weakness of the element. So the, the element out of balance and the element in balance. And I think that in particular, the suit of wands, because usually we see a more negative picture of the nine of wands. And here the fire has come into balance and reemerged as strength and that is the, the beauty of the element because in all the elements we want to bring each of them into balance. And this poor little guy who's clutching the phoenix egg who starts, I think the story starts where he's um, quite fearful of holding the phoenix egg and not sure what will happen if the egg hatches and then as he holds it close to his skin he feels the pulse of the, um, the phoenix baby inside and recognizes their energy as one and then he finds his strength through um, through that oneness and the backstories are just so beautiful and I love this guy 
And he reminds me so much of a little boy that I know called Narayan. And um, yeah, a beautiful, beautiful um, page of wands. I am going to do a video. I've started pulling decks for um, decks that I recommend that have a lot of uh, emotion, um, decks that are easier to read with court cards. And so that's the video that I'm kind of considering putting together. And I'm just going to show you, um, if you had to pick one favorite uh, major from this deck, what would it be? I asked myself that and I was trying to pull one out. And I also said if I had to pull a favorite court card because I think the court cards here are just absolutely stunning. There's so many. This is one, the King of Pentacles. But I also have um, a tremendous amount of, I feel the energy of this star card. And the hopelessness of this little boy as he got lost and then how that hope, how the, um, the inspiration, the fire, the light regained itself as the, as he began to follow this moth. I don't know. I just, I love these. I just absolutely love this deck. I, I can't say enough about it. I don't think there's anything else I have to say at this time. So if you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them below. Stay well, my friends. Namaste.